You are the fox. Imagine uh, if your husband told you that he wasn't in love with you anymore. And what if he told you he wasn't really the man you married and he'd been keeping a secret from you that he would rather be with another man than with you and the children? Yeah? Okay, the women on today's show, that's happened to them. They were completely devastated to find out that what they thought were perfect husbands were really perfect strangers. Actually, how well do any of us know each other? Please meet Cindy. Cindy says she was absolutely destroyed when she found out that her husband was gay and had been having affairs with other men the whole time they were married. Cindy's ex-husband, Brian, is waiting backstage, and they're going to be talking in a minute. But first, Cindy, we wanted to talk to you first. You said that in retrospect, you really ignored a lot of warning signs that Brian was gay. What do you mean by that? Well, sorry, there were so many. I must have been a complete idiot. I caught him in bed with a man. He, t he had told me the man had never slept in a waterbed before. So, and I believed it. But they were sleeping when you caught him. Yeah, Let's in know, because on your side, you caught a man sleeping in the bed. Yes, in my bed. I had come home. Right. Nobody was moving. And, yeah, nobody and was moving. <laughs> there, no, they were sleeping there. And he said, oh, he wanted to try a waterbed. Yeah, he had never slept in a waterbed before. Okay, okay, what else? Every Halloween, he would make me dress him as a woman. I mean, the makeup, the eyeliner, the wigs, my clothes. There were phone calls on him yelling, uh, don't fool me again, I'm married. Uh, but you could have, could have been another woman. Well, don't call me again. I'm married. Could have been well, another woman. To be honest, I didn't even know what it was. I didn't. Not for one second did I even suspect that he was having an affair, even with a woman. Like I really had all my trust in him. I mean, he was my whole world. So I guess I was just blind. I didn't see all the all the things that I should have noticed. But you don't sound to me like you're a dumb bunny. You sound like no. That's just it. Now I can look back and say, oh, I must have been a total idiot. But there was okay. There were so many signs. I mean, he, I used to go to the store for a pack of cigarettes, and he would have my clothes ready for me. I used to have to wear dresses and high heels to go to the grocery store. He was const uh, The first time I went out and left him home alone, I come home, and my, he had redone all my cupboards. He had cleaned my whole house, rearranged all my furniture. The first time I took him out in public, he got drunk and come out dressed as a woman, oh. you know, in my girlfriend's clothes. All right, but the cleaning, he could be any husband who's every compulsive. Week, every two or three days, he was rearranging my furniture. He was picking out my clothes. Really, you know, it was... That is a bit extreme. Yeah. How did you learn, out, learn that he was gay? We had an, um, a little bit of problems in our marriage with him drinking. And, well, first uh, of all, how long were you married to him? Four years. Four years, okay. Okay, and uh, there was a little bit of problem with him drinking, and one day he didn't come home, which was not unusual. He would go for days on end. Well, I finally located... It was located. not unusual for him not to come no, home? No, um, that's what I'm saying. He'd go for cigarettes and come home five days later. Like, bye, honey, I'll see you in five minutes. And he wouldn't come home for five days. Wait a minute. You're married to a man for four years who goes for a pack of cigarettes and four days later he comes home? Yep. And you don't want to know where he's been? Oh, yes. I found pictures. I, I, I found pictures that I don't recognize, like, where he's sitting at. And I've asked him, I said, where is this picture from? I do not know this furniture from. This is a gay bar, but I don't know this at that time. Okay. Same with a lot of clothes that he's coming home with. Like, he'd leave with an ordinary, like, Levi's sweatshirt and come home with, like, you know, an, another man's shirt, like, totally different clothes. He had no money when he left, besides $5 for a bag of cigarettes. It never entered my mind. But we had temporarily broken up while he was at a, at a party with all guys. And uh, my son was sick, and I went, I wanted him to come home, but he didn't want to come home. So I said, fine, you can stay there. So after about a week or so, he came back to me and asked, could he store the, his clothing at my house? Because where he was living, they were being evicted. So <clears throat> I decided then that uh, I, I still loved him, that I'm going to surprise him. I'm going to put all his stuff back, put him in his drawers, like the socks and the underwear and everything where it goes. And when he come home, be all surprised because we have our family back together again. When I'm going through the stuff, that's when I found edible underwear, pictures, letters from his lover saying how much of a wonderful lover he is. If it would have been a woman, I can see a case, you know, you can compete with a woman like most women can. But to find out it's a man, the first thing that I felt was disgust. I was like nonstop vomiting. I played the song, When a Man Loves a Woman, for two days, nonstop. <laughs> I just sat there, didn't eat. I had, I had children, didn't eat didn't sleep, just listened to the song over with all the stuff that I had found in his suitcases in front of me. 
until I could no longer take it anymore, and then I set fire to the whole works of it. Then I went through the feeling of everything, okay, maybe I did it. Maybe I wasn't feminine enough. And that's when I spent all the time walking around in lingerie, like 24 hours a day I was walking around in lingerie, <laughs> seeing if I could change him back. You know, and that, that still didn't work, obviously. And uh, then I thought, well, if I, could, if I could change myself and make, you know, if there's something that man has that I don't have, and I rack my brain trying to think what it is that he could be interested in, <laughs> you know. <laughs> so, you know. <laughs> So then, after, then, I got, then I got angry that he could do that to me, that he could do that to our children. You know, and then, then I found out that every person that we knew mutually, like you go through the doubts wondering is, hey, are all those friends that we had together, all those men, were they like really like winking at my husband when I was turning my back? You know, when they come over for dinner, was it for no, dinner or was it for my husband? No, I think your feelings are very valid. Everything you're thinking are the things I've heard from people to whom this has happened. You're, it's very valid. Uh, Bottom line it for me, after all these years, do you feel used? Is that Oh, what definitely. I was used as a cover. There was no other reason. Like he, I, I do not believe he ever did love me. I even asked him, why in God's name did you marry me? You knew you were gay. You ha He's the one that told me that he had affairs the whole time we were married. It was him, his words, that he had a lover the whole time, different lovers, while we were married. So I asked him, why in God's name did you marry me? You know, I'm not as nice. At, at that time, I'm saying, listen, you bump why in God's name did you marry me? Yeah. You know, but uh, well, he, that's told, the anger, he told yeah. me he thought that the, the gayness was a stage. You know, it's like teething. One day you're going to wake up, I'm not gay. You know, that's what he thought it was. When I asked his family, I used to go crying down to his, his uh, sister that lived below us in another apartment. I would go crying down there because he would never come near me. I thought there was something wrong with me. You know, he would never touch me. They all knew. When I asked them why they didn't tell me, they said, well, we thought he had changed. His own brother caught him in bed with a man. Now, Brian told me this. His own brother caught him on the couch with another man. And none of them, all of his friends, our friends, nobody told me that this man is gay. You really feel that everyone in the family and friends knew? And oh, no I know one, they did. I, and no one, how can it happen that no one would tell you? Well, Brian's the one that told me that everybody in his family knew. knew. Let's ask Brian. Okay, Brian, come on out and let's ask. Brian, you've been hearing what Cindy has been saying about you and your relationship. What's your side of it? Um, I don't know where she comes up with the dressing in her clothes all the time. Oh, excuse me. I, in fact, I could get a picture here real quick. Do you remember the long blonde hair, curly, my blue dress? There was one, one time uh, her sister suggested I dress in women's Excuse clothes. me, it was at Mother's Pizza. You came, you, in fact, you told exactly. me about these because I wore your clothes. That was the idea for me to dress as a oh, woman. Okay, what happened at the party? Remember, we're all sitting there and I'm like really proud of my husband and all my little kids and all of a sudden comes my husband wearing clothes. Do you remember? Clothes. Remember? And then yeah, I but stole, I don't I think... I stole his clothes. Okay, I... but wait, we're not really talking about clothes here because clothes have nothing to do with what we're discussing. Clothes have nothing to do with being gay. Explain what happened. Um... I was ab abused as a child, so I guess the process of coming out was a lot harder than for most. Um, well, for some people it's hard, and for other people it's Exactly. Hard. So when I did meet Cindy, I did love her. See, Cindy? My mother asked the first day she met him, before we married, my mother looked her right in the eye and said, Brian, you're gay, aren't you? What did you say to my mother? I told her no. Uh, oh, everybody asks him. Everybody asks him. No way. Not everybody no, asks No, me. Brian. And as, All right, but we're I'm not hearing Brian's years. side. Cindy. But at that time, I, I didn't know I was gay. Okay. I was just having trouble dealing with it. Did so you we, love Cindy? Yes, I did. But you did have an affair be, with a man before you met Cindy? Yes. Okay. That could, you thought it was a phase. I can understand that. Uh, well, yes, and that was more of an experiment. Okay. And it wasn't, was not a cover. It was not a cover. It was definitely Wait, now, not you said it was only one person. So, you said it was only one affair you've had. Okay, now you went for cigarettes and come back five days later. Do you remember that? No, that wasn't five days. Oh, okay, how long was it? How long was it? I don't even know when you went to the bottom of the corner, about. When you went to the, bo the bottom of the hill for cigarettes. Okay, wait now. All right, let's change that around then. When you went to Cape Breton, you took off, no one knew where you were, and you came back and you went to Cape Breton. Okay, so that would have been one person, right? That With would have been one person. person. Okay, and then you the man in my bed. That would have been another person while we were married. 
Um, when I go to Cape Breton, that's not to be... Same with... That would have been another one. So that's three right there. No. And you got, you got the man in my water bed. <laughs> you, got the one you, you got the one you took off with Cape Breton with. Yes, ma'am. And the one well, in the... You, can, you get to take him home. Let me talk to him for a minute. Okay. <laughs> First of all, um, I'm 42 and single. And thank God I'm very happy about that part. Okay. Um, the thing that really upsets me is if... You knew you, you said you didn't know whether you were gay or not. Correct. It's like being a little pregnant. Either you are or you aren't. Hello? Yeah. Well, yes. Okay, let me, let me, let me, let me, fi let me finish my frame of thought when I finish, you, know. you can have the floor, okay? I would never have married her not knowing what my sexuality was. That would have been the first thing you should have gotten clear. Know yourself before you marry somebody else, okay? But at that point, I thought. I ain't finished. Oh, hey. Okay, I'm not. I'm not saying that uh, your life would have gone in a different way, but if you stop and think, you're making her life go a different way as well as your children, if you have children for her, or if she had children before you, whatever. The family is going to hell and back because y'all can't make up your mind where you're going. The thing is, we have a, we have an 11-year-old son. Well, he doesn't now, know, by the we? way, he doesn't know that his father is gay. Oh. Well, well the, the, he's with him. He's, I mean, he may be a horrible, horrible husband, but he was a good father. He didn't have much to do with our son. To a year ago, my son went down last summer for two weeks. He asked, could he stay the year? We live 3,000 miles apart. Right. But I wouldn't let him stay with Brian. I let him stay with Brian's sister and visit his dad. I don't want my son seeing that. We have he another daughter together. Anyway. Oh, no. We have a daughter, and she knows. She's 15. She knows he's gay. My son doesn't. Because of my strict upbringing, the way my family is, I love my family very much, but because of the way my family is, because... They were devastated when they found what Brian was. My dad's the old Air Force type. You know, men do, you know, work nine to five, the women stay home and bake bread, and you come home and play cards with the neighbor once a week. When they found out Brian was gay, they were disgusted, but not meaning to. They're taking it out on my son, his son, because the fact that he's gay. They don't know, I, they honestly, I don't think they realize what they're doing, but they do not. I can't him. think of anything worse than taking anything out on a They child. don't say anything exactly. to him, they just, exactly. and I have told him. Mean, That's true. It's very true. But wait a minute. Whether he should be honest to his son and at what age is something we're going to discuss as we go along. When we come back, we're going to meet a woman who just found out a month ago that her husband is gay. She says, for her, this has been the worst nightmare come true. Stay with us. So the question today is, what happens to the mate of the person who is gay if uh, that person is a heterosexual? Today we are talking with women who say, for them, it was the rug completely pulled out from under them when they found out that their husbands and the fathers of their children were gay. We were asking the question, Cindy, right in front of you, were you too naive? Were you too innocent? We're also asking the question, were your parents so strict? that in bringing you up according to the way things are, instead of the way they really are, that maybe that played a part. And then at what point do we discuss this with the children? Meet Tammy. This is a month ago. A month ago, Tammy found out that what she thought was the so-called perfect husband was gay. And she says in this month, it's been a nightmare. Her husband, Glenn, is with us. We're gonna hear from him in a minute. Tammy, you just found out that Glenn was gay and you say that since that, it's been extremely empty for you. How did you find out? Well, March 5th, he took me out for supper. And he told me that he didn't know what his feelings were anymore. That he... How long have you been married? We've been married since May of 91. We've been together since May of 86. Well, that's a long-running relationship. Any yeah. children? We have two children, a 7-year-old and a 3-year-old. Okay, so this year he took you out and said he didn't know what his feelings were. Yeah, he said he would always love me, but he didn't know if he was in love with me. 
that's as far as it went. He had no more explanations of why he left or anything. And so he left? He left. Anywhere along since 86, any thoughts or feelings about sexuality? Absolutely none. No feelings about sexuality none. at all? None. See, Cindy's not saying that. Cindy says there were things she didn't see. You're saying you didn't see anything. I didn't see nothing. Okay. And then he, uh, he left. And for two months, I was blaming myself, not knowing why he left or, or what I had done to make him leave. Now, for nine years, you thought he was a ladies' man. Very much so. A ladies' man. Had that problem. He went out, he worked on cars, he uh, fed me breakfast in bed every weekend. I did my job during the week. When he worked, he came home on the weekends. It was his turn. He did cook the meals, for, fed me breakfast in bed, did a lot of things with the kids. It was a perfect marriage as far as I was concerned. He always told you how much he loved you. Yes. He'd go on trips. He'd uh, phone me every pit stop he made and told me how much he missed me, how much he loved me. And, and this was right up until the end of February. Very different story than Cindy. How did you find out he was gay? Um, he said he didn't know if he, didn't he still loved He didn't know how loved he felt you. or if he was still in love with me. And then May 17th, we sat down and we were talking. In the meantime, I was getting phone calls from friends and family asking me if I figured Glenn was gay, if I figured he left me for a man, and I says, no, that's not Glenn. He wouldn't do that. Did any friends or family say he might be gay in the nine years you were with him? No, but I had talked to my sister, and my sister did inform me that they had suspected it before I even married him, but yet they never told me. How has the experience affected you and the children? Well, I'm just very upset, hurt that he could have married me knowing, or at least remotely knowing that he could be that way. It's going to be the kids that pay for this. It's going to be the kids that suffer. I think it's time we heard from Tammy's husband. Glenn, come on out. <laughs> Did anything that Tammy say not it was not correct? No, everything she said is pretty much correct. Um, I didn't myself know that I was gay like Brian. I mean, I went through a lot of years of denial and and uncertainty about myself. Um, when I met Tammy, uh, we we became really good friends instantly. And just like a lot of other people, um, you know, you really have a genuine, caring, loving relationship with a friend. Um, at that point in my life, I think I mistook that for, for what everybody else would call a heterosexual feeling. Um, it was really confusing at the time. After, after the few, first few months that Tammy and I were together, we, we ended up, uh, she, or sorry, she ended up getting pregnant. Um, still at that time, I wasn't even sure, you know, about what I wanted or what I was doing. Hmm. Um, but nine years together? Nine, the, the first four years where we weren't married. Um, we just, uh, we, we lived together. Um, unless, I, I, I don't know, it's, it's hard to explain unless you were actually in that situation, you know, um, and you were with, uh, or living every, all, all the time in, in, a, in a heterosexual lifestyle, you know. You still, you deny it, you put it on the back shelf. You look in the mirror in the morning, you say, no, not me, I can't feel this way. Glenn, I'm going to ask you the same question I ask anyone. If you even thought that you might be gay, Mm -hmm. Why marry? I think that, uh, like I said before, I mean, so you're sure of what your sexuality is? Is now, yeah. Yeah. Why? Um, before it was, uh, it was just a matter of uh, being confused. You know, like I was confusing the the genuine affection and feeling I, and love that I was feeling for Tammy um, with being in love. You know, and I I didn't know what the difference was at that time. I you mean, we were, thought that you loved her and that was love. That's right. Okay. Now I'm going to ask you both a very difficult, both women and then both men. Very difficult question. Um, people like to think, one would like to think that you'd know in bed if a guy were gay, if he preferred men. <laughs> you would like to think that there would be something wrong with the relationship that you would 
that you would perceive, that you would tell if you paid attention? Sexually, no clue, none? No clue, he's actually, <laughs> believe it or not, the best person I've ever slept with. Wow. Have you Boy, slept with others? Retreat. Before I was married, I did. My turn? Oh. <laughs> well, we can, I can only count how many times, I, I can count every time I slept with him on one hand. Oh. Like really, the whole time we were married. And real, honest to God, you well, cannot Well, that would let one. you know. That well, no, know. I thought it was me. He told me that anything, you know, and I wasn't like a, a real pro at this, like I was basically, you know, okay, new that's at fair this. Enough. And he told me anything besides kissing on the mouth, and I'm not talking about, like, I'm talking like your mother would give you, is considered perverted. This is what you told me, did you not? And no, the only, I did you not. Did, so you said, I, you said any kissing besides on the mouth is, is definitely perverted. And the only way we would do it, like I'm right. begging. We didn't For you not to know confirms what we've been saying. I thought but it was me. what about him? <laughs> he, was, he was the best, I'm sorry to say it, <laughs> but I'm not lying. You got a big head? <laughs> now, like, now I'm, I'm telling you. Know, the I, truth. I, can't, I can't speak oh, for everybody I else. I can't speak for everybody else. I know well, how I felt. Glenn, you know, I, before. I think that, okay, you said for four years, it was kind of rocky with you, you're not sure. I believe that mm -hmm. part with you. But for 10 years, Brian, maybe you're bisexual, I don't know. But for 10 years, and telling her about this pervertedness with a peck on it, whatever the case, I wasn't well, no, there. I, I but a you one. knew I a She's a good you, talker, you though, used when you're her, a good and you, listener, and so you, you believe and it. And you just, as a oh, cover, I'll deny it. and all you did there was fulfill your sexual needs all the way. Because I, I, what I know of a bisexual... Wait, wait, he didn't have any f sexual needs five times in ten years? No, that's no, not no. That's that pushing it, and that's it. pushing it. He's not exactly <laughs> fulfilling. He made children, he had it, even if it's five times. He had both. Do you know what he, he says about it? Uh, he, he knew. He's de you don't. Do you know what he told you, me? We used to, I, got, I got a better sex, one. I, Sally, what? She, she would fake, she would tell me that her orgasms that were okay, fake. He, he told me, he oh. said, Cindy, I have such a big one, isn't it a waste? Because he's not with women. It doesn't, it, doesn't it kill me because it's such a waste? That's what he told me. I don't know where you dream these oh things up. That is the both, truth. You told me what I a knew, waste. I knew you were going to do this. Both, uh, both uh, Brian and Glenn both have children in the marriages. Do either of you feel bad for the children, and are you worried about the effect it will have on them? I, uh, I, I feel, what I feel bad about is that, um, you know, I, I not only deceive my wife and my kids for a long time, but I, I deceived myself, okay? You know, I lived in a relationship that wasn't honest to them and it wasn't honest to me either, okay? Tammy and I are committed to focusing on positive issues with our kids and, not, and, and, and just not only the gay issue, Hun, but... Look at Tammy. Yeah. Look at Tammy. I Tammy know. is a wreck. She's, she is a wreck, you know, and I, not, she's not only a wreck, but I'm a wreck too. I mean, I committed a lot of time and love to this relationship as well, you know? And I'm not saying that it was a waste of time because we've got two beautiful kids out of this relationship, you know? Um, two very smart, intelligent kids who are going to be able to... the shock of her feeling that kind of betrayal that she was being used mm -hmm. is a very difficult thing. It is. It is going to be difficult for the kids, but, I mean, if we... Um... It wouldn't have to be, though. No, it's difficult. It doesn't it's always it's happen difficult that for her way. As well. This man says that even though his wife says she is a confirmed lesbian, he believes she's going through a phase. He's going to stop at nothing to convince her and win her back even though he hasn't seen her in almost two years. Stay with us. You are the fuck. You're up on stage. that interesting you would wonder why there would be that difference we're speaking today we've been speaking with women who say that what their worst nightmare was is that when they found out their husband was gay it's not always the man who gets married even though he is gay please meet Jim he is a husband in the same situation as these other women his wife announced four years ago that she was a lesbian he says the whole thing is ridiculous and he will do anything to get her back, even though he has not seen her in almost two years. Jim's wife, Amy, is with us. We're going to hear how she feels about this in just a minute. 
Jim, I have to ask you, four years is a long time to hold a torch for someone. Do you believe Amy is gay? No, I think it's um, more of a... You think it's a phase she's going through? I think it's a rebellion. Um, her mother has never liked anybody that, that uh, she's ever dated. Um, they call me Charles Manson Jr. Okay, I think it's time we heard from... I'm a little confused at what you're telling me. I think it's time we hear from Amy who's been waiting backstage. Come on out, Amy. <laughs> Amy, you, ha you haven't seen each other in two years. You do not look happy about no, I don't. She's what's embarrassed. Wrong. I am. Why should I be embarrassed? I'm not embarrassed because I'm gay. You're not. I'm not? How do you know what's going on in my life, Jimmy? I know. I found your phone number, didn't I? I know where you live. I know where you work. I keep track of you. That's right. You're... <laughs> and I live 1,300 miles away. That's right. You ought to get a life. I got, I, I got my life. Well, then go on with it and leave mine alone. Do I interfere in your life? Well, then how do you know my job, where I live, am everything I, else? Am I interfering in your most life? People, most people confuse the issue of being gay, and they, the first thing that they think of is the sex part of being gay. There's so much more to that. There's the emotional side of being gay, the attraction side of being gay, the, the culture, the lifestyle, there's everything else that's very inclusive in being gay. You know, and it's, it's unfortunate that the only thing that people recognize the is, is the side. sexual side of it. Amy, uh, you heard that Jim, he does not believe, he thinks this is a phase for you. It is not a phase. What I you... have not lived a lie for the past four years. Okay, okay, hold on, hold on, hold on, stop. Amy, you say you're here to tell Jim how you really feel. Why don't you turn, we're, we're all getting off the issue. Turn to him and talk to him. I want you to... Too bad. <laughs> Anywhere near me, my friends, or anybody else, or I hear of you've been anywhere, I will have you arrested. I've been You're there obsessed. before. Well, carry your tail back. Oh, how am I obsessed? I live 1,300 miles away. Well, then how do you Hold know stop, where stop, I stop, work, stop. my phone number, everything else? I know me? everybody in the town. Well, then stop checking up on me I don't and have get to on check. with your little pissant life. Yeah. I've got somebody that loves me. This month? What about next month? How long have you been on your job? You see this right here? I just got that for a year. In seven years, how many diamonds have you bought me? I bought my own engagement ring, wedding band, and your wedding band. That's right. And there it is right there, too. Well, why don't you take yeah. it off? <laughs> you just put it on. Who bought your car? Who bought, who, bought your, who, who bought the cars that you drove around? All, all right, guys, I I'm going to ask you, you to go to your neutral corners for a minute. <laughs> Let's meet Cheryl and find out what's happening to her. Cheryl says she was married to her husband four and a half years. After they split up, Cheryl was shocked to learn that her husband was in love with, not another woman, another man. Cheryl says that not a day goes by that she doesn't feel ashamed and humiliated that her husband turned out to be gay. Cheryl, finding out that the man you married is gay has to be difficult for you to understand. And what has happened since we asked you to come on the show is extremely difficult for me to understand. Would you please explain it to us all? Well, to start off with, uh, my husband, ex-husband, is a coward. And if he's watching, I just want to let him know he is a downright bold-faced coward. Why, Cheryl? Um, he, he not only used me to cover up his true identity for sexual feelings, but he used the Sally Show to get a free trip to New York. From what I understand, there was like a gay rally yesterday. Yes. <laughs> My husband, ex-husband, was probably the Grand Marshal. I mean... <laughs> I'm sorry. I mean, this this man has no cooth, and his lover can go down with him because I have nothing nice to say about either. So one what of them. we did was we sent him a ticket. Right. And he came and he brought his lover, which is okay for us. Right. And today, when we called, he lied to us once, twice, three times, four times. He and lied to us out. all morning, and then he just skipped out, took the ticket, and went out to the airport, changed the. But reservation. Sally's show got him. They uh they canceled all his travel arrangements. <laughs> Tell us your story. 
Well, first of all, we were married for about four and a half years, and I, all marriages have their problems and complications. Sure. Uh, I'd had one child, and I was pregnant with my second child, and there was no communication. He decided to go back to school, which I was okay with, and started running around with a new group of people, and kept uh, specifying this guy's name, which I was told I can't say on the air. Okay. Just over and over this and this and that about this guy, and I thought, well, that's really cool. He's got a new friend, you know. But there was no communication. Last time we had sex, I was about five months pregnant with my daughter. Um, had my daughter, and I had met someone at my job, but I, when I took my vows, I took them for the rest of my life. I mean, that's the way I was raised. It's like, you don't meet someone, screw around with them, and then tell your husband. You just don't do that. And I was true to my vows, and I did befriend another man, and I didn't think that was fair, so I told my husband, I said, look, let's remain friends, let's just separate for a while for a trial basis. And he just says, okay. I was devastated, I mean, I couldn't believe he just, no argument, no anything. So he chose my son's second birthday to move out. And uh, three days later, I was a manager at a local food chain, and I had to be at work at 4.30 in the morning, needed a babysitter, so I called over there and I said, can you please watch the kids? And he's on the other phone going, I told you it's over, leave me alone, I don't love you. I mean, I'm like dumbfounded. What, you know, we didn't discuss this issue at all. And uh, so I called my girlfriend and I said, take me over there, he's with some girl. I was jealous, I was livid. I was like, I wanna find out who he is already with. And we went over there and we were sitting in the parking lot and he drove up with another guy. And this guy got out and he was a <laughs> Literally, you can laugh, I'm serious. I mean, this guy was dressed to the hilt, he was arrogant, flamboyant, you name it. He was just, and on top of that, his lover at the time looked at my ex-husband and said, who's it gonna be, her or me? I just went, oh my God, you know. <laughs> he says to this day that he never slept with a man while he was still with me, but I, I don't know. If he's gonna lie about coming on the Sally Show, who knows? Yeah, I understand so. that. All right, let's take a break. We'll be right back. Yes. Um, I think that in this day and age of AIDS and STTs, it's very important that you are all practicing safe sex, and are you, especially you, Brian, because you've had so many lovers, we've heard. Um, <laughs> I do so practice safe sex, and I haven't had many lovers, no. And have you all been tested for AIDS because there's been a lot of affairs and stuff? I have, yes, I have. and I have. Yeah, I have. Right. That's, That's important great. and a very good yeah. point. Thank you for making it. Yes, sir. Hi. Uh, this question is for Brian. Um, at what point in time are you going to tell your son that's 11 years old that you're uh, sexual? Ah, preference? you asked the right question. That's well, I wouldn't do it like she did with our daughter. I thought she was too young to understand the How fact. How old did she tell the daughter? Uh, I think she was about 11. Okay, now that's but he what... he was fighting custody for me, and I told her why she could not live with her father. But, she used, but wait, 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 wait. She told her to use it against me. No, I didn't. Yes, I you did. I think yeah. that Let's meet Dr. Elise Goldstein. She no, is a I, relationship no, expert and is here to help us understand and accept the trauma that can come when you find out that a spouse is gay. Let's deal with what we've been talking about. Is there an age of cognition for the children if she told the daughter at 14 at 11? I think 11 is fine, but I think there, is, there are individual differences. You've got to take your cues from the child. When the child starts asking about sexual orientation and understands that there are gay people in the world that you can start dropping a few ideas and plant a seed and then take your cue from the kid and see how he responds. If my son, when he finds out his, his, his only son, when he finds out his father's gay, is it going to be normal that he's going to say, geez, am I gay too? Did, did I inherit it? Well, so and, you and answer stop, that. And stop exactly. not wanting to go call but on his friends, like guy right. friends, occasional kids. Well, you don't have to be a because I'm gay. If you're not afraid of that, you help him. You say, well, no. Uh, it doesn't just pop up. 
generally that I, you might have. I don't think. Sorry. What? This is what no. Saying. Right. Um, what makes you think that his son will think like that, and your daughter's not thinking like that? My daughter. Well. Well, no. In fact, yes. my daughter Good does question. think that way. My daughter does ask. You know, mom, does that mean be gay? My daughter does think that way. Every time he, he has, he's outside no, no, playing no, ball no. with boyfriend. Like, no, but what I'm boyfriend. saying is, I'm not saying for her to her. think about him. How does she think about herself? You're saying that he, your son is going to think that he might be gay. Why wouldn't your daughter you? thinking that she would be gay? No. No. And, okay. And they're not really around. But it's, it's, it's a very good question because right. it's safe sex. The yeah. son and the father. If she and, were gay, then people and they're not really close. Like she might be. Uh, what? Let, let's take it from the point of view of the spouses. What effect can this have on you finding out that your husband or wife uh, is gay? Devastation. Devastation. I, I think there's a tremendous shock. I think you believe you grow up believing that what is is, and then you find out what is is not. So you end up doubting your own perceptions, and you feel like you're going crazy. So there's shock, and then I think a tremendous amount of humiliation, which it doesn't have to be. Really you don't have to blame well, yourself. You know, that describes us as well. Yeah. You know, there's a lot of doubt. There's a lot of insecurities. There's a lot of questioning, who am I, you know? Life is not simple. It's not. No. I want you to deal with James and Amy. Let's take a break and come right back. Get off my stage! Dr. Elise, I think the biggest problem seems to be uh, James and Amy. Have, did you watch what they were saying? What, what are your thoughts? Yeah, I think um, Jimmy... I think Amy is mad as a wet man. Yeah. <laughs> to say the least. Well, Jimmy, I think everybody was right when they were saying that you've got to get a life. Oh, absolutely. I mean, I've, I haven't that stopped living. When I haven't stopped living. A divorce. Well, the problem is it's very painful when you have something to offer someone and it's your love and they say no thanks. I think you can't let your self-esteem ride on her acceptance of you and your love. You've got to take your love and give it to someone who's willing to accept it. Otherwise, your love doesn't do anything. Why take the chance of getting nailed again? I mean... She, well, it's a very good well, question. To, to this, getting, to this day, why didn't she tell me this, that, that this was? Why, why, why didn't she tell this? But you know, before he, I spent five years of my life fighting and fussing with everybody. Seven, and, that's, or seven James, years, that's the way you know, it goes, and you don't want to deal with what is and what is now. You keep going back to what was and why it isn't and how it he's was. He's living in the past. The hallmark no. of, of maturity and flexibility is to be able to deal with what is, and what is often can be very rough for people. <clears throat> You've got to deal with what is now. And you have so much energy. All that energy you're using, pursuing her, and being there for her is going to waste for, for you, and it's also driving her crazy. Now, about Tammy, who this is only a month old. What can yeah. we say to Tammy? Well, Tammy needs some time. Of course, she's going to feel hurt and betrayed and angry and needs time to grieve. It's a real loss. On the other hand, you can't base your existence on whether he loves you or not. You gave love and you received love. He's not the way you want him to be, mm -hmm. but he will never be again. No, I accept that. And, and all, like something that I Tanya, totally I've always discussed that. is that I will always be there for her. You know, whether it's it, it, whether it can only be in a friendship capacity, um, I'm going to be the strength that she needs through through all of this. And, you, our, and our kids and our kids are are. are forefront in my mind, you know, like, and they're going to grow up in a really strong, positive attitude, not only a gay attitude, but a people attitude as well, I think, if they're exposed to this at their age. You seem very sweet, and you should take advantage and receive his sweetness. He can't give you more right now, so you've got to feel the fact that you're a woman who can feel her own beauty and feel her own attraction. We'll take a Someone... break, and then we'll go back to our next two couples. <laughs> Elise, help me deal with Cheryl. Cheryl, you've got to help your son feel safe and safe around his dad because he's going to want to feel affection and love 
and want to feel his dad's love. And he's going to need his love as much as you might resent him and be furious at him. And you, in fact, can't allow yourself to feel frightened by him. But it's important that you set some guidelines with him and talk with him about what's acceptable, what he plans to do or well, show in front of his son. My son's not scared. My son says he loves his father, and I believe him. He said he was uncomfortable He was uncomfortable over. with the idea of his dad writing, I love you, so-and-so, oh. on the mirror. And another thing, he went over there, and he doesn't want to go back because his dad's lover got in a fight with him because he didn't want his child there. And my son felt it, and I, I want to let my kid go back there. And if you're watching today, you're not going back. You're not getting your kids. You can take me to court, but you are not getting your kids. When he says he felt uncomfortable with the I love you, you need to get his feelings out and let him talk and, and sit with them. Well, he, he knows the difference between gay and heterosexual, but, um, and he knows that he feels that it's wrong. And what was the other reason that you didn't want him um, over there? My ex-husband's lover got in a doesn't fight want him, with my ex-husband because of his children. So you've got to get the two of them to iron them out. Uh, iron I'm that not going to give him well. a chance. It seems he that had the children chance. are always tugged around, and they are always give it a takes, It takes what, both what parents about, responsibly. Dr. Lee, what about Brian and Cindy? We started with them. What about what about them? <laughs> we heard. I've never heard two such different stories in my entire life. It was as if you were on two different shows on two different topics. Well, he said one thing completely different than she said. I think that you were talking around the major issue, that you were, they were disagreeing about minor things, about what, did he wear a dress or what color was the dress that yes. he wore. And uh, I think that the two of them got together. You were very young when you married him. And uh, he, you said he made you laugh. And they got together. I think he has a feminine side. Her father was very controlling, very militaristic. And there was a lot of love. He, however, was quite confused and didn't really know that he was gay or sense that he was gay. There was a real tug for him. But this is about as feminine as it gets. Yeah, well, oh, it's please. a little feminine. Really? I mean, were you insulted by my saying this feminine? This is feminine. Well, but, just yes. like the way she goes uh, on, I wear image, dresses all the time. My, I know you didn't wear dresses. No, no and I but don't. My, very, very, don't get me wrong, I didn't come here to pick them all to pieces here. I think they very, get along they very dress, well. They dress up they, actually, they, they do get along off very well. Yeah, that Take still makes me laugh. Dr. Elise, but mainly I want to thank the people who were nice enough to come and be on the show. Uh, it's not an easy thing to do, and we're aware of it. And dealing with the issues of that kind of shame or embarrassment or the fact that whatever we do affects the people around us, that's an extremely important thing. People only lie because they feel if they tell the truth that they'll be hurt by that. So thank you very much.